In the unit root test, I will, I will include the linear trend and constant both. Right? So let me apply unit root test. Go to this data analysis. Uh, uh, I have to choose other models. The unit root is, is available here. Then in from these options, I have to choose descriptive statistics using PC give. And then I am choosing formulate. Uh, I have to apply the test on LGDP and L cones. Okay. Here I will do I will choose unit root test. And uh, in unit root test setting, I have to choose the trend and constant both. And uh, let me complete it. These are the unit root tests applied to my data which contains the consumption and GDP. See, what are these results telling me? Uh, here is your T ADF, which is minus 2.5 uh, to 9, and this is 5% critical value. This number should be smaller than this, but in this case, this number is large, this is small, this is uh, reversed. If you have the situation like this, the unit root is not rejected. Uh, similarly, you can see here, 3.16, this is 3.49, this is small, this is large. It lies on the right side, and then right side you have acceptance. And uh, here you have one, two, zero. This is basically augmentation. The software has tested for no augmentation, then augmentation with leg one, and then augmentation with leg two. And the results are summarized in one line. So uh, here there is no difference. It will not make any difference if you choose leg one, if you choose leg two. But suppose uh, one of these numbers is smaller than critical value, the other is larger, then what you have to do? Then you have to decide on the basis of AIC. The AIC is given here. You will choose the number which is giving you the smallest AIC. And if there was a difference between the output, some of the output was rejecting, other was not, then what will happen? This is minimum AIC, and you should choose the number corresponding to this. Right? So, what I found? I found that the two series are unit root. What next? Basically, we have written the procedure here, but it is uh, behind the screen now. Let me summarize it here. What we have to do? Uh, first, test XT and YT for unit root. Okay. If the two series R unit root, then you can proceed. Right? What is next? In the next step, you have to run the regression like this. Yt is equal to alpha plus beta xt plus epsilon t. And what next? The next is you have to apply unit root on this. Test epsilon t for unit root. If this is stationary, then cointegration exists. So, what I have done, I have completed this. And I actually found that X and Y both have unit root. So I should proceed to this thing. 
In this regression, there is no leg term. When you have no leg term, the regression equation may be termed as long run equation. There is no leg term in this. So you can term this as long run equation. Uh, so I have to calculate this long run equation. Go to formulate, again for time series data, and then single equation dynamic modeling, formulate. I have to choose L cones as dependent variable, L GDP as independent variable, but these legs are not to be included. I am double clicking on these numbers and these are going back. This is some regression, but this regression will have meaning only if co-integration exists. We have to verify that these are co-integrated. If these are not co-integrated, this may be spurious. Spurious means there is no solid interpretation of the results, right? So first, what I have to do is to test the residual of this series for unit root again. The residuals of this series are to be tested for unit root. So, uh, go here, test, and then choose this option. What is written over there? Store the residual, etc., in the database. Okay? I am choosing the residuals to store. And this is proposing the name residual. If you want, you can maintain this name. If you want some other name, you can give. But if I am proceeding further, I will use the same residuals as error correction term. This is error correction term. So I am naming this as ECT. Okay? So this series is also saved in the file. ECT series is now visible to you. What next? Now, this ECT series is to be tested for unit root. I will go again to this thing, model for time series data, and I have to choose mo other models, and then descriptive statistics using PC give, and then formulate, and uh, now I have to apply the test on this. And this regression should be free of intercept. In this unit root test, there should be no intercept. Oh. ECT, and then uh, choose the setting. In this setting, you have not to include constant. I have unchecked this. And then I am clicking on OK. These are your results. Now see, there is a difference in the results. The critical value is min minus 1.95. And this T ADF is uh, 1.93, this is larger than critical value, Vi minus 1.96, this is smaller, and minus 2.17, this is also smaller. So if I decide that leg, leg two should be, yet there should be two augmentations, then the decision is still unit root exist. But if I decide that there is zero augmentation, then unit root is rejected. What is most appropriate? Look at the AIC. What is minimum value of AIC? This is minimum, minus 7.15. So the TADF corresponding to this is the most appropriate TADF. 
and uh, this is compared with this critical value lies on negative side. So the null hypothesis is rejected. What was the null hypothesis? The ECT series is having unit root. This is rejected. When this is rejected, then what is the conclusion? If ECT is unit root, if, if, if you are testing this, if this turns out to be I0, this is I0, then what happened? Then co-integration exists. This means according to our analysis, the co-integration between consumption and GDP exists. Uh, these stars are seeing that the value is smaller than critical value. This is rejection at 5% level. If you have two stars, it will be rejection on 10%, sorry, 1% level. So what is the conclusion so far that I have taken two series, consumption and GDP for Pakistan, and I have done the analysis, unit root testing, then static regression, then testing of the unit root in error term, and I found that co-integration exists. 